So we're back again, this time we're at Westfield. We're going to try and improve on the last video. So we're joined by Molly and Peter. We're going to walk the course first, talking about how we do it in terms of charges, methods, etc. So before we go around the ship, we all just felt a little bit rushed last time. So we're going to walk the course, go stand by stand, talk about the targets. Molly and Peter will then tell you how they would apply it. If it's correct, if I think uh, there's things that we can work on, we'll talk about that, guys. but unfortunately the um, the audio is horrendous with the wind I'm gonna invest in a microphone so some of the stations will be talked through by me some of them are actually okay so station one is what I'm describing to you now we had a, a pair of right to left standards very very wind affected 30 40 yards um, you'll notice uh, when I come up to them I'm gonna sometimes I'm not gonna pre-plan which one I'm gonna shoot first it's um, they're coming out so different so I'm gonna come into one whichever one gets my eye first or whichever one comes through the gun first I'm going to shoot that with a pull away and obviously then depending which one I shoot first will will make the fix in the middle um, I'm going to come up either behind it with a swing through or I'll be out in front understanding that it's going to slow down dramatically as it flies into the wind okay let's take a look Two's a, a big peg, eh? Yeah. I the words, but I'm not going to repeat the words because I've got children watching. So this is where I'm going to do Westfield. So, hey, if you can just follow my finger here, you see the land drops away. Okay? The land has to drop it down. So, we've got to start thinking about the topography here. We've got a very, very big, very, very fast right to left. It's definitely fine. Really slow down. It's uh, coming up to you, but it's, it's really slowing us. It's a slow down to that.
rocked out of it. And just like, shot white still under energy so it's going to be fairly consistent all time to Get on there. Um, shot full hearts on the tail. Okay, stand three, edgy, edgy bird going away over our right shoulder, um, climbing up the bank, so I'm just gonna use a very steady swing through coming into that, followed by a really, really powerful Shondell. So I'm gonna have to get my eyes back early, um, make sure I understand that because the bank's rising, that I understand that the clay's rising too. Don't get put off by the topography. Before I power my gun up the line, I'm gonna make a nice connection to that bird and then power through. Up that, up that line, if I was a choke changer, I'd probably be a quarter I see in a modified um, on that second barrel. Thank you. 
space here. Let it fall underneath. Let it turn. It's going to want to go across your car. So I just mounted fractionally early on the next three, but again, very, very effective behind it. The, the pace of the first bird did catch me. Rescue the peg. Um, on we go. It's climbing. 
hard to judge because there's nothing in view with the land dropping down. So I find the machine, see the machine that's pointed upwards, so that dictates how much of it is. You know, it'd be like this if it was doing it. So yes, it's under it, it's not under it. Lead wise. So again, the earlier I take it, I'm going to know more about it. So exactly what you said, Ollie, a very slow swing through on the rabbit. I could shoot it, pull away, or if it was flat, but I'm going to shoot it swing Oh. A bit of an error there, missed two of the big, big, big overheads. I, um, I did what I wanted to do, so it's just a misread. Um, didn't, even, didn't do anything wrong. Just uh, gave it what I thought visually would be about four foot. Didn't work, went to five foot, didn't work got to six foot and blasted the last two so that's just a misread i'm not overly upset about it i'd rather have just let one slip through but we've done a lot of work around there but uh, gonna make up for one of those but big big bird big peg it's got beat and then the wind's going to turn him away from you. Uh, probably two of the easier birds that we've seen today, but probably two of the most technical. You can go very, very wrong. So, um, well, how, how was your first bird here for you? What's the first thing that into your head when you see that station? It's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Because the first thing that comes into my head is, that first bird looks okay. But the moment I get down there, it's edge on. I know that now. Looks great here. I'd rather shoot it here than there. So it's going to be very, very, very edge on. We know it's rising, but because of the topography, the next time we can see level with our eyes is that house across there. So we've got a big valley in between. So what is it doing, Peter? What, what is it doing? Um, is it rising flat or climbing? Um, it, it's flat with a drop. I mean, it's look. dropping quite quickly. Have a look. It's, yeah, it's, it's rising to a point and it's then rising. going away. Yeah. And everybody will shoot under it, the valley's dropped away, yeah. we've got nothing around. That's what makes Westfield hard, and it's what makes Steve actually quite a good target setter. But here, you know, we just watched an England international there miss two of them. Yeah. Because he's gave you an easy bird, but beat you by background. We just watched an England international miss it underneath twice, because again, he paid no attention to just an easy go away. But what's the easiest way to get up the line? What method? Swing for a perfect. So we're going to come in with a negative lead, yeah. but very, very slow hand. I'm not going to shoot on top of it. I'm just going to come through the line of it. Then I know I've already got whatever I need to get. Second bird, Peter. How are we shooting that? Yeah, so once I've taken that one, then straight wait for the bird to be driven off. I'm going to wait until it starts to serve and then just pull under it. 
as it's starting to curve off. And how are we going to so we've got a lot of footwork to do, especially yeah. being left handed, so we're worse than for a lefty. Yeah. You've got to go from this way yeah. to this way. Yeah, we should be okay. We don't have that we've got a shuffle. But one thing that's major in here that you must do is nothing. Shoot the first bird and do nothing. If you engage that first second bird too early, you get paralysis by analysis, and you'll be going, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shoot the first bird, get out the shot, yeah. set your feet, see it, eyes before hands, and then make the shot. Do we think the second bird is going to be wind affected? Yeah. Massively. Yeah. Yeah. It's out of power. So we're probably going to have to determine the lead structure in the shot. You're going to have to look at it. Is it quick? Is it slowed down? Is it dropping? This is every single pair. It's not like a normal shoot where you just yeah, press repeat, press repeat, which you know that's slowed down. You know, now the wind's died. Then that one might happen. There's the wind come. So it's going to be dependent on your eyes picking up what you're going to do. Okay. Choke wise, I'd probably shoot uh, an IC and an 8 and a skeet and an 8 if I was going to be changing strokes. We're not. We're just going to get stuck into it. All right. as I came up the hill but I made my mind up by the time I got halfway up the hill that, that stand's going to be forgotten because we've got a difficult going away burn here so I managed to put that to the back of my mind uh, shoot an eight you notice some very very different kill positions on the second bird because the wind was stalling that big tower bird so I learned about it and made my mind up halfway through the shot but more than happy to shoot eight because of the mental discipline of with the mental side another eight out of eight so we're halfway around the course now we've just finished at six or so halfway around two away let's go and see what the second half has told stand seven um, we're now above them so that changes it makes the shot 3d so normally that going away but if you were still on the floor you shoot straight at it well now you're going to have to shoot where it's going because you're coming into it so what's your ideas on there what's your methods well, on the first one i'll probably have a set hold point and just on that hold point and let the Bird is coming above the barrel and will trigger. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. For, to the second one. For the second one, it's curling round to the left side. I'll actually wait with the barrel out there, wait for the bird to come round into it, and then just move just before it drops down. Yeah, I mean, so pretty much what I was going to do. Same thing. I'll have a specific hold. Look down, so I'm looking below my feet. See it come in. Make very slow hands, as Ollie said, and just intercept it. Almost take that shot. The second one, I'm going to sit on my lead though. What you've got to do. We'll talk about this in another lesson. Is where you quarter birds off. So it's got his first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter. We're going to shoot that second bird in its fourth quarter, which means it's at its most unstable. So it could do anything. So if you wait till then to get into position, you might find it dump on you. So I would actually get into position where I want to be and hold it through the third quarter till my actual kill point is where I want to see it. Now, guys, if you take a look back, press rewind on here and have a look at the gentleman that we filmed shooting. He actually misses the pink bird, concentrates on the green, and kills the pair with one shot. Brilliant referee, and the referee saw it. So that's obviously something you've got to pay attention to as well. That definitely won't happen to me because I'm going to shoot the green bird way later than that. So the, the pink bird will have landed. So 
lots and lots to think of there because there's many, many kill points. And what happens when you see a bird for so long is that you start off with a lot of discipline. When you kill it late, earlier, earlier, and we miss one. What's very vital is there, again, is do nothing. Be prepared for some downtime. Kill the pink one and wait, wait, wait. Make your connection and you dictate your timing, not let the clay dictate. Okay, on we go. Well. Bang. Is that it, yeah? Just see, that green one usually but they, comes over. Just see him again then. Yeah. Yeah. Usually come oh. Bang. Yeah, no, oh. the wind's catching them. So the, the green one's just very variable. Yeah. Oh. Teal, well, simultaneous pair actually. So, Peter, your process is on here. What are you thinking? What's the first thing you notice about the land again? Uh, land again, it, it's dropping away. It's dropping away. Yeah. Um, for me, that's a right to left. Uh, I'm going to do pull away, so connect with it quite early. Hold it a little bit, and then go up to the pro. Just see what it is first yeah, before best. making the, and then just tap it as it's coming down. And it might be that we get there early. Yeah. It might be that we get there late. Well, it's, it's wind affected on some of it, but it's wobbling around. So, same as Peter, it'll be a pull away from me. And then, where the crow is, because it seems to be blowing in sometimes. And yeah, just come up to it and pull the trigger. Perfect. The pink one, again, I might do something a little different. People are going to think, look, if you all just turn around.
hips and my knees to give to get me through to the second video. So 10 out of 10, we're two away. It's just disappearing away, so you can't really tell without going away whether it's you know dropping, whether it's going. So again, anybody's been walked past with anybody else with the machine. Send the gun down the valley, match it to it. Whenever I get one of the tricky targets from below my feet, I start at eye level. Of course, it, this bit doesn't matter, I'm not going to shoot it there. So, my eye level is where my whole point will be. That's where I'll get connected, learn its speed, and then the power will come in. We're looking at chokes on the last two stands. The previous stand would be two ski chokes. Like this one here, we were light modified and a modified with two eights. Here's that Batu trap you're on about, Peter. You asked about whether you'll be trap lining across like a looper. Let's explain to you on the way down. You can see how far back the trap is. Be tilted. Yeah. So what you've got to do is get it out of the valley. So we're probably going to end up coming up and then the power will kick in and it'll be parallel. So yes, it's a Batu, but it's going to be shot more like a standard, yeah. but obviously a lot more lead because it's moving. And that's where understanding the trap can actually set the course of my pass. I said I wasn't going to do it and on the last one, just a complete lapse of concentration. I can blame many, many things, just pure idiocy. I put my gun down the valley, missed the line, and then had to put the power on and I didn't get the correction in time. So, pissed off about that. That's a silly miss. I was in the century there. So, you know, that, that, that's just something we've got, to, we've got to get out of our head before we get to the next peg. So, not happy with it, but um, that's the reason. You know, I said that these were always be honest about missing, and uh, I just made the error that I said I didn't. Okay, 
stand 10, very, very claustrophobic. Um, it's only two skeet chokes needed if you're, a, if you're a choke changer, but that makes them more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is come in with two swing throughs, but from a very small, small amount of negative space. So I'm gonna come in under side of six inches, make that transition again, understanding that the land is rising on these first birds. So the bird looks like it's dropping, but it's actually climbing. So I'm gonna make sure I get up the line, making sure I ignore the tree in the background. I don't want the tree to put me off. And then we'll transition through, going out of my shoulder, back into a, a swing through on the second bird. So hopefully that helps there. Again, another bird we shot it previously on station three just dropping in over that right shoulder so we're looking to shoot a very steady swing through but on report again another powerful batu but the topography is playing tricks again it's got a climb so um what i do here is you know i just set a set, set a tone with my finger where is it at the beginning of the bank oh i'm here if i put my finger here the bottom of the bank is here and the birds here but at the kill point if i stare Ah, yeah, it's definitely still climbing. Just by gauging with my finger across the flight line with a flat topography there, I can see that that bird is actually still climbing. So I'm going to get a good connection to that before I power up the line. If you're a choke changer, probably quarter and modified before we actually get clean up that line. So on we go. So that's stand 11 done, uh, eight out of eight. It's that quarter inch shoulder bird, just let that run into the bow really, a bit swing through. And uh, all the way up the line of that batu, making sure I didn't make the mistake that I did on that previous batu, you know. It's easier to say forget it, but it does piss you off. So you just compartmentalize it, you put it somewhere else for those four pairs. I've got one stand left, uh, probably the hardest peg. Um, happy to have a bar, silly, silly batu. 
don't think it will. I don't think we'll win it, but we're not going to be far away. But uh, I say one big, big peg to go. So we focus down on that, and then we'll take a look back and reflect on the shoot. I must admit. What are we thinking on there, Ollie? We've got a, uh, got a long, long back to there, followed by a simultaneous one directly above our heads there. So, what's the tackling process on there? First one, probably a bit away from me. Uh, the second one, well, it's not really doing much, is it? So, just come up underneath it and then just pull the trigger. Yeah, just watching that second one. It's moving around a lot in the wind, so I'd probably give it that little bit of time to just start finishing and then go for it. First bird. First bird, yeah. Okay. For me, uh, again, as Oli said, I've got away, so I'll wait for it to come out and connect with it. Just have a little bit of time with it and then pull away from it. What are we looking at the land? What's the first bird definitely doing? It's definitely climbing. It's climbing, yeah. so pull away. Might be a little bit, you, it can work. I'm probably going to drop into a little bit of a swing through. There's not going to be a big lead, so I might drop into a swing through to get up the line. And the problem with the second bird is it's very, very easy to read here. When you're up the pit, you won't know if it's up, down, or stopped. So I think what you said there is very important. You've got to let it do something. You could kill the first bird, come up, shoot under this one, and it's rising. You could shoot straight at it, it's falling. So I'm going to shoot the first bird and wait and make sure that it's dropping before I take the shot. Because you're going to get there at different times. And when you're under it, this from this angle here, you have no idea what's going on. Okay? Perfect. Very, very happy with that. I've dropped into that to make sure I get right up the line with my this first area. So, very, very happy. 97, 97 scored to win the overhead and the, uh, the battle. What an error. I don't, I don't think it'll be enough. You know, some very good shooters here today. How do you think you shot? We don't. You don't know yet. Do we, are you happy with what you've shot? Yeah. Yeah. Happy with the score, Peter? Yeah. I know you're ecstatic with yours. I'm ecstatic. I think I've got even ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be we're going to be quite high up. Um, so I'm happy with 97 now. Now I don't think it'll be enough, but I'm happy with the pressure I'm putting on myself. Let's talk about the course. I think it shot as hard as we thought it was going to. Yeah. I think um, walking round like we did, I, I don't believe has any impact on me. But I think it certainly helped the both of you going around reading, telling me what you're going to do, and then know you're going to be judged on it. You then, I, I probably see the best I've seen you execute, execute plans, yeah. if that makes sense. Ollie, what about yourself? Do you think the walk around helped you, or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It's been a long day, hasn't it? I mean, I know, I know you said you're exhausted. Yeah. yeah. What? Um, which was your hardest stand, be, Ollie? Which stand would you say is the hardest? I think the hardest bird was the overhead. 
Yeah. The, you the should be fantastic. I mean, the, I was two there. The rabbit coming down the hill and the overhead yeah. going away. So the rabbit wouldn't be in a difficult bird, Seven. and the transition to the overhead makes that overhead hard. I would have said the hardest station, I know I missed two there, but again, I would say that the last time was equally as hard. You know, it was a big crosser in that wind, and you know, we just had a word with Harry there, and um, as you went up that hill, you know, that, 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 was, that was a big start. I mean, as we said, that could affect your mindset. So. Look, I hope you guys enjoy watching the video back. You know, thanks for Ollie and Peter for joining us, and hopefully we'll get to do this again. Take care. So now we've got Harry and Abby with us here. Abby's been on the desk all day and Harry's been, well, not doing much. I caught him, caught him sleeping in his car at one point. <laughs> so, Harry, you're responsible for the first stands going up the bank. Yeah. Uh, how do you think it shot? Did it shoot as hard as you wanted to, softer than you wanted to? Did the um, wind play much with it? I kind of wanted it quite steady just to start off with so the shooters. Build, build into it. Confidence. Um, the way things were looking, it was pretty steady. Place, so. Yeah, I think you did a good job because um, in that wind, if you'd have took the spring off them, yeah. you'd have been in trouble. So I think uh, I think that was superb. Do you know how many entries you had? Uh, we had about 200, I'd say. Uh, 171 competition and the rest would have been... But that, I mean, what time is it now? We we were slowing down, obviously, because we were filming. We have done it in an hour and a half, so it, it certainly flowed again. Anything you're, how's, how do you think you're learning as your dad's giving you more and more of the reins to set stuff. We're all going to make mistakes, so don't be hard on yourself, yeah. but what are you learning as you go along? Um, the biggest thing I'm probably learning is always watch Dad, and when I'm down here with, with Learn from him. Just look at him and just see what he does, uh, what he does with the traps, the different angles he puts on them, um, and then we have to, when we maintenance, learn how to do that as well but I think you did a good I think you did a good job today mate I think it was a, again I said it last week it was very very balanced throughout you know first time I've seen Abby on the desk and probably the fastest we've gone through she lit it up for us so thank you both for doing what you're doing because you know without you two we'd only have one shoot on today and not two so well done both of you thank you very much thank you very much